Historians have long believed that the Northwest was a fairly insignificant region in terms of the Bronze Age. But after a chance find, they're now having a rethink. For the last year, JC Norman has been following the progress of a secret dig, which has uncovered a remarkable piece of 4,000 year old evidence. Morecambe Bay, rural North Lancashire. There have always been gaps in the knowledge for archaeologists when it comes to the Bronze Age, but recently everything has changed. secret location, hands are digging in the earth, hoping to uncover a 4,000 year old piece of prehistory. Volunteers from all over the world are here, all because a man with a metal detector made an unusual discovery. Matthew Hepworth was out with a pal doing what he's been doing for 20 years when he heard the telltale clicks, but this time they were pointing him to something a bit special. I came up to the hilltop, I've been on it a few times before, and I had the fortune of digging up a late Bronze Age chisel in complete condition, fantastic patina. It dates from about 1200 to 850 BC. This is the chisel along with a knife from the same period, discoveries which caused a bit of a stir in the archaeological community. This allows us as archaeologists to go back in and open up the exact find spot um, where he recovered the artefacts from and see what kind of other archaeology that's associated with. This is a fantastic site. What we have here is a potential early Bronze Age burial mound uh, that we're going to be excavating over the next two weeks and it's in a prime, prime place to be the burial of some people who are potentially very important indeed. I joined the team on day one to see how an archaeological dig actually starts. It turns out you need the most modern technology to find the oldest things. This is a GPS kit and what this is reading is 17 satellites above, uh, all the mobile base stations and this is giving us a pinpoint accuracy to the millimetre of where we should set our trenches out. The high-tech technicalities complete, it was time for some good old-fashioned spade work. That's the first one. There's going to be plenty more. I'm very excited about this. Very excited. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. I would be very, very, very surprised if we don't find human remains. And the signs are looking really good. We've removed all of the topsoil and all of the grass. Um, and we're coming down now onto our, um, our first layer, our first Bronze Age layer. Um, and that shows that we've got a, a really quite large and substantial um, column of stones that would have sat on top of um, what would have been this, this Bronze Age uh, burial site. And now that we've exposed this much larger area and we've travelled back really carefully, we can start to see what we call discrete features. I'm just a bit of rock crystal. <laughs> which was really significant for these type of burial mounds really. It was sort of a precious stone to them. Ooh. How far have you travelled to come on the dig? Uh, I came from New Zealand. Anna, tell me where you've travelled from. Um, I'm from Vancouver. Not everyone had quite so far to travel. I'm a staff nurse at work at the local hospital. Oh really? So yeah, this is a great dream. A chance for me to be able to do this. Got some fragments of cremated human bone. Uh, I can tell it's human because of how it's fragmented, um, the different shapes that it fragments into. So animal bone fragments in different ways. Oh really? Yeah. What can you find out from that bone then when you send from it to be analysed? Like, what can um, well it'll be, it'll be me analysing it. So basically we tend to look at how much of the bone there is. So that can tell you whether it's a whole person or whether it's just little bits that have been collected and deposited. We're at the top and the sides of the monument now. It's much more likely that we're going to be getting the cremations that are inserted subsequently into the sides of the monument. If we are going to get a actual uh, burial, it's more likely to be towards the center of the monument and it will potentially be in its own stone, uh, small chamber known as a kiss, a small grave. And by the end of the two week dig, that's exactly what happened. The team found what appeared to be a cremation pot, painstakingly dug it clear of the soil and then carried out the delicate operation of removing it from the ground.
Two months later, the pot is in a lab in Preston undergoing a micro-excavation. We're going to treat the pot excavation like it's a site, mm. like it's a small site unto itself. So we're going to excavate it like a dinner site and separate out the materials. We don't really know anything about the people that live there in that time, to be honest. So, you know, in that context, whatever we find is important. The team have almost finished the micro excavation. It's been a really exciting afternoon. They've uncovered lots of bones. They believe that this is a bone nest and they've had the workers out for them putting them all into these sample bags where they'll be sent away for analysis. I wasn't expecting that much bone. The pieces are really good. We've got a lot of ends of bones, we've got jaw bones, we've got vertebrae, so we can get a lot of information off that. And there is an object in there. There's a thumbnail scraper. Is, is the icing on the cake. The fact that it's a thumbnail scraper, you know, puts it right on the cusp of the late Neolithic early Bronze Age, that's fantastic. I think this is probably the best preserved cremation burial from the Bronze Age that I've seen from this area. Anyway, so. so what next? Um, well, I shall be going through all the bones, um, weighing everything, measuring everything, and then looking at how much there is from each part of the body, see if there, how many individuals there are, uh, look for pathology and illness, um, yeah, and hopefully we'll move on to some radiocarbon dating and things after that. So Stuart, the results are in. And just a few weeks ago, I met up with Stuart to find out if preliminary examinations of the bones had revealed any more of their secrets. So it appears to be one individual Originally, I thought it might be two or three, just from the sheer volume of the bone. It appears to be a young adult, probably male, relatively healthy. It should be possible to tell where he was born, where he grew up. Remarkably, around the same time as our dig, another hoard was discovered just seven miles away, providing yet more evidence that Lancashire was a significant region for Bronze Age man. These sort of sites are not uh, constructed in isolation, so I would expect there's actually a, a number of prehistoric sites in that area, probably a complex. The hoard itself is extremely significant, it's, it's probably the most significant Bronze Age hoard found in Lancashire so far. The early Bronze Age, which is where the urn is from, is uh, still a very poorly understood period, and this has the potential uh, to shine a light on the Bronze Age, not just in Northern Britain, but also uh, with a world view across the sea into Ireland and into the Bronze Age in Britain in general. It really does pay to have a metal detector. Well, that's all from us for this week, but Inside Out is back next Monday at 7.30. Until then, goodbye.